For this next lesson, we're going to take a look at special angles and exact values. So we already know that for the Pythagorean theorem, we typically think of it as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In this trig, we're going to use x, y, and r because we're going around a Cartesian plane. The point x, y lies on the terminal angle, so this would be my point. And the distance from the origin to point P is going to be R, which is the radius formed from the rotation. The equation of the circle with the radius R is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to R squared, where R is always going to be a positive number. If we're using the reference triangle on the circle to determine the three primary ratios in terms of x, y, and r, well, then I could say that for Sokotoa, sine of this angle is going to be the opposite, y divided by the adjacent, or by the hypotenuse of r. Cos is going to be the adjacent, x divided by the hypotenuse of r, and tan is going to be the opposite of y divided by the adjacent of x. If we are using this diagram to determine the signs, either positive or negative, of each of the trig ratios in each of the quadrants, we're going to start up in quadrant 1. And we're going to say that in this case, x is positive, and y is positive, and r is going to be positive. So I'm going to say that the opposite, which is positive, divided by the positive r, is going to equal a positive. A positive divided by a positive is a positive. Same thing for cos. Positive x divided by positive r is going to make a positive. And for tan, positive y divided by positive x is also going to make a positive. In quadrant 2, we can see that y is positive, r is positive, but x is negative. So for sine, positive y divided by positive x is going to be positive. For cos, a negative x and a positive r is going to make a negative. And for tan, positive y divided by a negative x is also going to make a negative. When we get to quadrant 3, we have a negative x, a negative y, and a positive r. So a negative divided by positive is going to make a negative. Negative divided by positive is going to make a negative, and a negative divided by a negative actually makes a positive. And in quadrant 4, we have a positive x, we have a negative y, and we have a positive r. So the negative y divided by a positive r is going to make a negative. Positive divided by a positive is going to make a positive. And for tan, negative divided by positive is going to be negative. And we can see that in quadrant 1, all three ratios are positive. In quadrant 2, only sine is positive. In quadrant 3, only tan is positive. And in quadrant 4, only cos is positive. So, we can summarize this by stating that sine is going to be in positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Cos is positive in 1 and 4. Tan is positive in 1 and 3. Well, if there's four quadrants and they're all positive in two of them, then that means they all have to be negative in two of them. 
sine is going to be ratio, or sorry, sine is going to be negative in three and four. Cos is going to be negative in two and three, and tan is going to be negative in two and four. Now. We memorize this by using what we refer to as the cast rule, where if I start in quadrant four and go counterclockwise, it's going to spell out cast. I could do the same thing by starting in quadrant one going clockwise and using the add sugar to coffee. This tells us in a quick way which ones are going to be positive. In the first one, all of them are positive. In the second one, sine is positive. In the third one, tan is positive. And in the last one, cosine is positive. So, in which quadrant does the terminal arm of the angle theta lie if both sine and tan are negative. Well, if sine is negative and tan is negative, then cos has to be positive. This is going to occur in quadrant four. If cos is positive and sine is negative, then tan also has to be negative. That would also be in quadrant four. If I'm determining without technology whether the ratio is going to be positive or negative, I just have to think of where would this end? Where is the terminal arm going to lie? Well, in this case, if it's cos of 310, 310 is going to finish in quadrant 4, and quadrant 4 is going to be positive for cos. If I'm looking at tan of 265, 265 is going to end in quadrant 3, which means that this would be positive for tan. Sine of 288, 288 is going to end in quadrant 4, which means that this is going to be negative for sine.